The State Department of Transportation Communications Director, Jen Goodwin. Jen, good morning. Good morning, guys. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we are. Listen, first, thanks for joining us. We're going to get to the specifics and some of the maps and where we are with things here in just a second. But first, how are you guys holding up? This is, uh, as so many people have said, it's biblical and just almost unexplainable. Yes, it, it, it's, uh, it's catastrophic. It is uh, something that we've never seen before. I've been with the department uh, going on 18 years. I've never seen anything like this in my career, and I'm, I'm hearing a lot of that from my coworkers. Um, it is uh, an all hands on deck, 24 hour operation, um, but we are we're determined to make sure that we reestablish re communication and connectivity in Western North Carolina. Um, with that said, it is very important that I know so many people want to help and we are so appreciative of that, but at the same time, everyone's safety is at top of mind and first priority. So we are uh, really asking for folks that are traveling to um, avoid that area unless it's a uh, hurricane response related or if it is local traffic. But if it's say you're coming from hours away, we really don't recommend travel to that, that part of the state for uh, you know, the strain on the infrastructure and also just because of all the um, recovery that's going on right now. Jen, we were talking about this during the break. Obviously, the, the, the want is for all everything to go back to normal as soon as possible, repair all the roadways. But first, we have to assess how much damage there is. And that's something that you guys are in the process of doing. You were saying you're still finding roadways that, OK, that one's washed out. That one has a blockage because there's still so much we don't know. Yes, I mean, we're not even a week into uh, our recovery and we're recording as of yesterday, as of five o'clock yesterday, about 490 closures. And we have identified about 700 damage sites and 100 impacted bridges. And I mentioned, of course, that number is going to change throughout this recovery effort. Um, we do have a website, drivenc.gov. We encourage people to check that out, to uh, look at the road closures, but keep in mind that that number is going to change and there's probably some roads that aren't on that website because like you said, we haven't gotten to them yet, simply because of landslides, mudslides, uh, flooding, trees down, uh, just all kinds of challenges that we're facing to try to reestablish connectivity. And of course, the, um, the big one that people talk about is Interstate 40 mm -hmm. near the Tennessee border. Uh, we are still trying to figure out the extent of the damage there. We are working on maybe a, a plan to stabilize some of the areas there that are still standing. Um, but we also have to communicate with our neighbors in Tennessee because they're also facing some serious challenges with restoring connectivity on their side. So um, we don't have an exact timeline yet on reestablishing that section of I-40, but um, we are working with Tennessee and our federal partners on uh, on a repair plan as we speak. Jim, we're looking at that driveinc.gov uh, website that you're talking about, the whole western part of our state. I mean, look at that, just peppered with yellow icons of, of road issues, and that's just a fraction, like you mentioned, uh, of what is closed or damaged. I, as we've been looking at the pictures and video over the last almost week, and I'm sure it's the same here, either the roads are washed out, there's a massive sinkhole, um, or it just looks completely buckled. How do you start to measure the integrity of the asphalt, of the concrete, of do you scrap it and have to start and rebuild or can it be supported so that you can get by? Like I, that's gotta be a difficult assessment. And, and we are working with uh, consultants and contractors and we are getting um, volunteers and help from other states to help with that effort. But, but you're right, every damage site has to be treated individually, case by case, because it has its own unique set of, of, um, of problems. And uh, location, of course, is one other thing to consider. The topography of the mountains and that part of the state is so uh, remote. And it's a challenge to just get to it, to get equipment there. And then, then we have to dis discern, okay, how do we fix this? Like you said, do we have to mill and, and, and just get all the damaged uh, pavement out and then replace it? Or is there anything there that we can salvage? Uh, we are getting some assistance from um, the state of Florida in terms of materials. We're getting about 7,500 feet of uh, temporary bridge material. And I think we've also got some assistance coming from um, Arkansas and Virginia with our bridge needs. And we've also have uh, some assistance from Kentucky. So 
yes, looking at that damage uh, that that you're showing is, is it's immense, and this is this is a long term recovery effort, and um, so we're going to be de definitely taking some lessons from this and how we can better establish connectivity, but. Um, as you can see, we have such a, a tall task of getting all of those roads cleared of debris first, and then we have to take a look at what damage we have, and then we have to take a look at how do we fix this. And um, thankfully, you know, we're not alone in this. We have we have assistance from uh, the federal government as well. So um, it's just going to take time. It's going to take a while. 